Hello and welcome everybody. Josh the RV Nerd with Bishop's RV out here in just gorgeous Kalispell, Montana. Got my hands on a new Transcend floor plan that I haven't had, well, not brand new, but new to me. I haven't had a chance to get this one recorded before and I thought maybe you'd like to see it because once again, what Transcend has done here is they've just cranked the originality knob up to 11. Um, I've seen private rear bunks before, but never quite like this. Uh, a lot of slide out living room bunk houses have no windows on the campsite. Transcend kind of addresses that problem. No shorty McShort pants camp queen bed. Transcend gives us a true queen. They've got a, a very respectable extended season package on these. And it has one of my favorite features to talk about anyway, the junk in the trunk storage system. Under those bunks, they've buried both uh, a little mini camp kitchenette as well as just an awesome chunk of outside storage in addition to the front pass-through, which also has an enclosed docking center. We've got 165 watts of solar on top, which is factory standard, and that's not the most factory solar I've seen standard on a stick and tin, but considering most still come with zero, I ain't mad at it. And with a 25 amp controller, you should be able to double up on that like Sir Mix-a-Lot if you're so inclined, and have yourself a pretty respectable package around 330 watts. I'm not caffeinated, it's early. If my math on that is wrong, my apologies. <laughs> Like any floor plan, there's some things in this that are really good, and there's some things in this that might be a, just a problem or a deal breaker for you. I'm gonna show you the slides closed, slides open, everything else in between that I can possibly think of, and uh, kind of break it down to see if this might be the right one for you and your family, and if you appreciate that kind of approach, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and as we go today, leave some notes. Let me know, uh, you know what you like, uh, what you would change given the opportunity, where they nailed it, where they failed it. And what's interesting here to me is there's almost some classic bunkhouse features like way back uh, before I was in the industry utilized in this one, but also with just that appropriate touch of, of modernization that, uh, that really works. Like this right here, walking in the front door and having this like multi-level shoe garage or a place to like, you know, set down your keys or whatever, the dog leash. I mean, that's old school camping that kind of just vanished from the industry and now it's back. And I'm going to give this one the designator of honorary, carpetless, and pet friendly. I'm not blind. If you look under the sofa, there certainly is a little bit of carpet, but it's not, I think, a walkable space. All of the walkable space in this RV is carpetless and ventless, which also gives us one the designation of being pretty pet friendly, if you ask me. Now you're gonna see up in the bedroom a second centralized air conditioner uh, that, that is uh, available on these right here. The, the first air is obviously standard, the second air is optional, but uh, the fact that it's centralized is actually a really standout quality. So if you're going to be hot climate camping, this is gonna be one that you might wanna take a look at. We'll come back and look at the kitchen in a minute, but that is a 12 volt compressor fridge right there. And you'll notice that all the windows open for max airflow wherever there's really windows present now the rv is six and a half foot tall inside which means that um you know it's industry standard height it's not uh, extra tall in any way um and that might mean that like in the shower that my head's up in the bubble a little bit but uh you'll see later that i stood in it i didn't have a problem what i don't really know offhand and i'm not really sure by just looking at this one is what is the road mode access to that rear bunk room going to be when the slide closes i think I'm wondering, I think you might be actually able to get through there, but we'll find out. Up top, we've got ourselves a TCL Roku TV, and it's at a really good location. This, I think, is one of the, the several things this floor plan does very, very well. If you uh, park your backside over here on the sofa, man, it is boardwalk and park place, and it's very social. All of the seating is really right next to one another and across from one another, so, it, you know, it's very focused on chit chat with uh, one another, which I really like. Now, one of the first things I would do is remove those dining table legs and those little mounts on the floor and put in a set of free floating legs on the bottom of the existing table. A lot of people think you need to get a whole new table. You, you don't, you just unscrew the bases and, and, and there you go. It's actually quite, quite simple. Um, and the fact that this one gives us any level of campsite window coverage, even though this is really the only campsite window they have, the fact that it's pretty big and it's in like the exact location I think you're going to want it next to the seating. I really give this one some uh, campsite window credit here. What they did was very impactful. Maybe not high in quantity, but it is pretty good in quality of positioning, I think. Um, also, now this over here, this is interesting. That could either be a pantry 
or it could be like overflow storage for the the rear bunk room or it could be a combination thereof like maybe you put the food on top you put the kids stuff on bottom and i just noticed something having that converter panel uh not be blocked by a slide out when it closes that's a smart feature um i also do like even though it's right next to the bunk room it's not actually in the bunk room so the kids are far less inclined to want to mess with it now this is an interesting uh arrangement over here we have an l bunk atop a, uh, a a corner double double bunk and you don't see a lot of things like this but what's great about it is it makes this camper potentially really good for bigger people because if you think about it you basically have an eight foot long adult size bed on top and then depending on who's with you you could do a you could double a couple of kids up down here you could do um, you know, like one kid on top on the left side, one kid on top on the right side. If they're not too long, maybe their feet overlap a little bit, uh, but you know, they'll kind of deal with it. And the bottom bunk down here gives us a nice little side stand with some household outlets and, uh, plugs. Now there's a couple areas in the RV where it's like, man, one more light wouldn't kill them, but it's never insufficient. It just, it's right on that borderline, uh, kind of, kind of space there. Now over here on the right hand side. You've also got TV hookups in the back room. So if you're going to spend an extended time back here, you allow the kids to bring some entertainment for rainy days. You could do that. We got the drunken octopus fight club, keeping an eye on the, uh, the, the kids back here. They're like, all right, kids, knock it off or else you're going to have to deal with me and Curtis over here. I don't know why his name's Curtis. I, I, I didn't ask. Anyway, um, by the way, I really like that. You've just got, now there are a couple individual bunk lights but the main cabin in the rear room just has a switcher. You can just be like, all right, lights out, kids. Now, somebody might ask, could you tear out the bunks and build an office in here? I don't know that I think this is a good floor plan to do that. Not only do you have a lot of, like, you've got a camp kitchen under the left side, you've got a bunch of storage that you'd give up, which that's up to you, but that thing right there, uh, that is your furnace air intake. So you do have a furnace system hidden under that bunk as well. I don't know how I'm tearing into that, like... You can do it, but it's going to be totally, totally up to you as uh, to, to what you're going to get out of it. Now, looking a little deeper, taking a look at the storage in here, six, uh, four small and two big dresser drawers in this rear room. And then as we slide backwards uh, back into the main living room, you see that there are doors on the dinette ends for storage, which is awesome. And then, of course, we have that uh, big storage tower between the bunk room and the uh, the entertainment area right there. Now, that TV can pivot around. I don't know that you need to do that a lot, but if you do want to get in the back of it to, like, hook stuff up, obviously you can. And even a couple drawers right in that entry area. I don't know about you. In my house, I got a drunk dr uh, junk drawer. My wife uh, didn't want us to have one, but uh, Logic ended up winning over, and we just decided, yeah, you know, it makes a lot of sense. We should have one of those. That's an 8-cubic-foot, 12-volt compressor fridge. Um, there is also that drawer below it, so, uh, you know, they didn't waste any of the space there. That is an area that I've seen some manufacturers tend to make that little mistake. And with this being a stick-built camper, they can have uh, power outlets for the kitchen, I think, exactly where you want them, down near the countertop level, uh, in areas that just make the most sense. Now, if I'm being fair, I think that this floor plan does lack a little bit in kitchen countertop prep space. I think... Uh, a handy solution for that would be if there was a flip-up counter extension on the end of that uh, countertop by the sink. I know that that would kind of, sort of, maybe be in the way of the hallway and the door. Uh, but, hey, that's the benefit of it being a flip-up. It's there when you need it and gone when you don't. Now, the kitchen is technically a little bit of a toe stubber slide system. But since most of the kitchen is over here in the main body of the RV, I don't know that that's too much of a major issue. But I'll also tell you, that's theory. I haven't actually used an RV like this uh, myself, so I'm not exactly sure of that. And, you know, I wish more manufacturers would do this. It doesn't have to be flashy or fancy, but just give me a place to hang a jacket and a dog leash by the door. Thank you so much. Just little thoughtful details like that. I, I wish more brands would do it. By the way, the light directly above our head right now is motion activated, which is something I think is uh, really, really handy. And they have an amazing bedroom and bathroom arrangement on this one. I love all that extra counter space. In a bunkhouse, you might need lots of room for various uh, toothbrushes and whatnot. And they left room for a wastebasket down there under that sink, which is something I wish more manufacturers would do in a bathroom. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever, uh, you know, <laughs> used an RV, but there's people who have need of the trash can in the bathroom. Um, you know, it's just, just a thing. And that is, that is exceptionally fluffy friendly. That is so, so well done. That porcelain foot flush stool, all the space around it. I do like the nice rectangular shower, but again, ooh, I also really like that towel bar uh, over here on the left. But what I was getting at is, remember the RV six and a half foot tall. Now I'm a little over six foot myself before shoes and hat, and I could stand in it and use it just fine because of that skylight. But the fact is, my head was most definitely up in that bubble right there. And just in case you're curious, they are not using any sort of big advanced vent fan in this bathroom. Um, the entire world, I think, is there anybody who would not prefer a bigger vent fan in the bathroom? Maybe that's the question to kind of ask here. Um, and one of the other standout features in this bedroom is the fact that right from the factory, it's a true queen size. Now, it's a backbreaker death wafer mattress. The mattress itself is not great. But the fact is you can replace it with anything you want and be awful darn comfortable in here. That is a cool feature. Also, both sides of the bed do have household and USB plugs. And as you can see, there are some TV hookups over there on the wall because you have a big sliding privacy door over here, um, you know, to uh, close off the bedroom, uh, obviously. Now, I think I misspoke earlier. I think I described this as centrally ducted, and I do apologize for that. That is not a centrally ducted air. Uh, it is early. I am not caffeinated. Uh, apologies. I'm just kind of crossing wires. But the fact is, you can still, obviously, upfit these to include uh, a second air conditioner right from Grand Design, which is awful cool. Now, they continue to do a great job of storage in their bedroom, but they do some very interesting things. Look at how both of your side, uh, you know, towers, as it were, have those extra bonus drawers below them. Um, additionally, you've got that easy lift storage under the bed, which is really handy. They really maximize the space uh, that they have around here. Now, the space over the bed uh, up here to the right is open, so you're going to need some kind of wicker basket system or something like that but thankfully there it oh there's really man that was optical illusion i thought there was a little more of a lip than that in there that is almost just flat i don't support that i i feel like that should have been a little bit more of a uh uh, uh you know a lip on the edge of that to keep stuff in place but you didn't really see a lot of hanging storage. Well, take a look at this, Carol Baskin. You've got double dresser drawers down below and then a big double closet uh, across from the bed. What I like about that concept and that design is it gives us the space and the function of a, uh, a wardrobe slide without actually having an additional slide. The mechanisms, the strength, the structure, the support that has to go with it, the extra cost, the extra maintenance and upkeep. Overall, that's pretty good. Now, the entry door is right over here by the hallway. So bed and bath access is a non-issue. What about the kitchen and the bunk room for road mode, though? Oh, yeah. As Randy Savage would say, you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. This, I basically, I'm giving this an AA plus for travel access. I mean, the... The, the refrigerator, the bunks, the bathroom, the kitchen sink, everything is travel functional on this. I was not expecting that. That is an awesome find. Now, when you look at the weights and the measures on this one, there's a moment where it kind of reads as half ton towable, but I would direct you to the uh, the length measurement on that chart right there. And with, with that factor right there, I, uh, it, it's long for a half ton. A lot of people don't realize, like a lot of half tons tend to be shorter wheelbase. The shorter your vehicle and the longer the trailer, the less comfortable the towing experience is going to be. So by the time you look at the fully max loaded uh, capacity of this and the, um, uh, the, the length of it, I, I don't know that it's going to be an awesome pairing for a lot of half ton pickups, but potentially some. Even then, I would only recommend a pairing like that for more modest terrain. Like, if you're very flatlands, not a lot of winds like where I call home, and you got a heavy late model package. Uh, uh, I told you it's early and I'm not caffeinated. A heavy late model tow package half ton, 
maybe for shorter travels. Again, though, my general recommendation on this is gonna be something a little more substantial, three quarter ton-ish, you know? Now you saw that enclosed docking center right there. There's actually um, motion activated lights on both sides of that pass-through, which I think is really, really handy. It's also a nice little touch most stick and tin campers don't do. Either they typically don't give you any motion lighting or they don't uh, uh, give it to you on both sides of the camper. Now down here, this is something I was really excited to see. They do have uh, a single sewer outlet on this camper. Uh, I wasn't really sure with the way this one laid out how it was going to play out, but I'm glad to see that that's how it all happened right there. Now, they use a little bit different skin um, on these transcends from most conventional stick and tins. Um, it's a little bit heavier weight, but it's also thicker. Uh, and as a result, tends to be a little more resistant to things like um, stones getting flung at it, hail damage, stuff like that. Although it's still a metal product, it could still dent, you know, so kind of keep that in mind. And again, back here we have the junk in the trunk storage system. Once again, with motion activated lighting and Kung Fu grip, which, uh, I mean, name, name another stick and tin camper that comes with Kung Fu grip for its, uh, junk in the trunk storage system. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> it's just not a common thing. Um, the, uh, the ladder back there gets you up to that fully walkable roof. And in our early little floor plan in a flash, you saw how we had the 165 watt solar panel up there. Um, it feels, I, I don't know. I'd love to get some uh, feedback from actual like transcend owners. Um, have they had any boondocking success with that solar package and the 12 volt fridge that we're looking at right here? Um, I'm kind of curious. I'm just kind of curious to see how it all plays out. Now we got a little mini camp, I don't know, kitchenette, convenience center, cooking station, whatever you want to call it over here. Got dad's medicine cabinet, then a little two burner uh, uh, cooktop kind of situation. Let me actually, it's, I meant to open that up for you, but it's early and the brains aren't working. A little two burner cooktop you got right there. I'm not a big fan of the fact that it doesn't like lock open. So if you are cooking on it, it feels like it can get knocked closed, but I do like this big cavity up here with those household outlets buried inside of them. That is a handy feature. I don't care. Like my daughter loves uh, a little bubble machine. Maybe she's getting a little bit too old for it now. It's sadly been longer than I like since we went camping. But that's the kind of place I'd plug it in. Then I'd put like a little fold-away picnic table over here or something like that. Be conscious of the fact, though, that you do have a furnace exhaust right next to this thing. Although that's really only going to be more of an issue when you are cold camping. Now, you do have um, water outside, but they keep it right by the door, not by the camp kitchen, which is kind of a push-pull. It's not by the camp kitchen, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's right by the door, so you can hose everybody's feet off right before they go inside. And what do you think about the uh, the steps here? Um, they, they've, they've not gone with stable steps, and I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of change in the wind in the marketplace. It seems like there are some folks who are wanting and preferring to go back to this style of step versus the stable steps. I'd be, I don't know. I, uh, what, what, what do you think about that? Oh, hold on. Uh, as long as we're here, uh, I don't think I've shown it on camera yet. The underbelly, it is enclosed. It is forced air heated. Um, I, I've not seen where Transcend has the same hard zero degree capability of like reflection and, and solitude and all that. But in the world of stick and tin campers, I, I think that they're about as good as, as it gets and close as it gets in that regard right now. And if you look just over the top of the roof line, you can actually see that solar panel just peeking at us. And again, the second air conditioner you can get on this one. So let me know what you think. Like I said, I think it's a uh, deceptively original floor plan. I think it's one that a lot of people won't necessarily see coming. I'm glad I got a chance to put my hands on it. Now, I'll leave you links in the video description like I always do, but in the case of a grand design, um, they do not allow us to publish a discounted price below MSRP on our website. Thankfully, we don't sell for MSRP. Unfortunately, we're just not able to overtly publish it, and I do apologize for that. Well, when you click those links, I want you to know what you're getting into so you don't feel like you're getting took for some kind of bait and switch or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, when you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.